Hello, hello, and happy Tuesday, friends. It is time to craft your joy. Hello, hello, Mary's here, Teresa. Hi, Deb and Linda, Colleen, Cindy. Karen's here from PA. Hello, Karen from PA. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you guys. So um, thank you so much for hopping on today and I have a special surprise. So this is kind of an unusual thing. And as I mentioned, one of the reasons I decided to kind of give my Tuesdays a wider um, a wider field to kind of play in, I guess, instead of just tidy up, is because sometimes things change and uh, circumstances change. And there are some things that I feel are important that I'm working on in the moment. And today is one of those days. So I'm super excited just to share a few quick tips on heritage. And this is something we're also going to be talking about for uh, the pop crop coming up this Saturday. And one reason I was working on heritage is, you know, as things change, as times change, um, that, you, one second, there we go, there's some other info there for me. Um, as, as I've been working in my craft room, I realized I had some things that were still in the basement that I needed to bring up here just because of all the rain and everything going on. And I realized I had some boxes of projects that were not kind of in my sphere, right? Like out of sight, out of mind, you guys know what I mean, right? And so I ended up bringing up these boxes from the basement. And one of the boxes was Betty Heritage. <laughs> and I looked at that and I thought, oh my gosh, we actually started this project just before COVID hit. And one of the things that I was um, so excited to do was to do this album project with my mother-in-law. So Betty is my mother-in-law, my husband, John's mom, and she is 94. Okay. And I, I, I love Betty. We have such a good relationship. I lucked out with my mother-in-law, my mom and her were also big buddies all throughout the years while my mom was alive. And, uh, they called each other, mother-in-laws in cahoots. <laughs> so they had a good time. And um, so Betty's story is one of those things that I have had on my list. You know, you guys know, we write down in our pop planner, the albums that are most meaningful for us. So one thing I, I shared recently in the pop group was that I've decided, let me get this in the right place here. Um, I've decided to kind of revamp my album making strategy a little bit. And I've kind of worked, uh, I'm working away from some of the library of memories concept. It's, it's still there, but I'm just getting a little more specific on the albums that I can actually create. So in that process, as you saw, one of the things I realized is that storytelling is really important for me and for my family. And it's the stories, right? Like, can I get like a thumbs up or a yes or a heart or something for those of you who really think storytelling is such a critical part of album making? Um, and I know that some of some of you might be, no, Lauren, it's all about the paper crafting for me. But when I grew up, my, you know, cutting my teeth on baby CM, it was about preserving our heritage and telling our story. And that's one of the things I truly do love about Creative Memories is that, you know, the root, the foundation is in preserving our heritage and telling the stories, right? So storytelling is a big part. So that's why I, I actually got some of these custom spines made. And one of them is the story of Betty. I see some hearts going up. I go, yep, yep, that's it, right? It's about, you know, getting those, those memories down on paper. 
Hey, and it's fun playing with paper and stickers too. I totally, totally get that. I totally agree. So um, in the process, I did the story of Betty, the story of John, the story of Lauren, um, the story of Warren, who is my dad, the story of Joan, who is my mom. And to me, it's really about more, it's kind of not just heritage, but it's about their story. What was it? Because some of them, like my mom and dad, they're not here anymore, but their story is what I want to tell. What do I remember? What, you know, we started some of these projects. I don't have all of it, but what do I want to kind of compile together as a heritage project for, um, for you know, our family as time goes on? So those are, so I have three tips for you today, as I mentioned, that are just some quick tips and they're, they're nothing su super mind blowing. Okay. And then I have a, a special guest that's going to be joining us um, in just a few minutes. And, um, but the first tip I have for you, and this is your kick in the pants. Okay. I am here to say tip number one is start now. So when I brought up that big box of, of Betty's, you know, Betty's story, <laughs> I was like, oh no, I have put this on hold for over three years now. It is time. So even though there are so many other projects I'm working on and there's so many other, you know, pulls on my life, I decided to push this up to the top because she's 94, friends. <laughs> she's 94. And I want to do this with her. So guess what? That got pushed up to the top. So give yourself that opportunity to start now if you'd like to start now. And uh, I'm giving you the kick in the pants. Do it. Get it done. It's time. The second tip I have for you is that every story is worth telling. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about... Um, so. Uh, in this process, I decided, I said, you know what, John, my husband, John, you need to go get your mom and bring her here because I really want to make some progress on this album. And in that process, so, so we've actually been working on Betty's album and I'm going to share a little bit of that with you on my desk. And in that process, what I am realizing is when we started uh, over three years ago, there was um, there was a little more ability for Betty to tell her story, and times have kind of changed. And so one of the things that John and I have been trying to do is get her comfortable looking at the photos and remembering those times, and then saying, you know, what do you remember about that? Was this, you know, and asking those open-ended questions and some maybe smaller questions to start. And trying to get that story, because we can look at the photos and go, oh, yeah, this is so-and-so, this is so-and-so, and, and that. But I don't know the story behind the photos. And so that's what I've been working on with Betty. And I'm going to show you kind of how we've been doing that um, in her album, just to give you a few tips. So every story is worth telling, but sometimes with who you're working with, if they are still someone that you have the ability to connect with and create with, you may have to help them out, <laughs> okay? And uh, otherwise, if you are doing this entirely as a heritage project, this is where you can reach out and ask for that help, ask for the people who remember the story, and hopefully then you can get some of those wonderful things. Uh, written down from these, you know, different time periods. And um, we talk a lot about this in the pop group. So I'm hoping we're going to kind of revisit a lot of these good nuggets uh, this Saturday in response to heritage projects too. And the third tip I have for you is really give yourself some grace. I had to look at that box that was over three years old <laughs> and say, it's okay. It's progress, not perfection. So that's my third tip for you today is really that get started. I'm giving you the kick in the pants. Get it going. It is so fun to work on those travel books and all that, you know, grandkids and all that. But if there's a story that you need to tell, 
I truly encourage you to do that. And just remember, it's progress, not perfection. So um, let's take a look at the desktop and I'm going to kind of share what we've been up to. And we've only done a few pages. And the other thing here is that um, Betty did not have a whole lot of photos to work with in the first place. So we've really had to kind of think about a strategy for her album. Okay, so let me just check the chat before um, we go, because I saw a lot of things flying by. So Linda's here. Hi, Linda. Carrie's here. Hi. Um, yep. And so you got, I got a lot of thumbs up as for, as the same as, yes, it's about storytelling. It's about preserving those memories and really kind of leaving that legacy. So thank you for the reinforcement. That is definitely right. Um, yeah. And Robin says she's been wanting to do a heritage album, but struggling on how to organize it. And I think we'll do a little bit more about you know, more detail about that in the pop crop. But today I just kind of want to touch base on a few quick tips. Lisa's here. Hello, Lisa. Yes, blessed to have her parents. Dad will be 96 in April. Oh, isn't that amazing? And um, my sisters and I are busy sorting photos and most important, getting the story. Awesome. Welcome. Shannon's here. Yay. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Um, and we are, I feel so, so fortunate to still have, um, you know, the opportunity to do this in person. That just, to me, is just amazing. So I'm like, it's happening and it's happening now. <laughs> okay, so let me just share. Um, my special guest has arrived, so you might hear a few things in the background and then... Um, we will, I'll share who my special guest is, but let me take, take a quick look into the book that, that Betty and I have, have been working on. So we started this with these two pages prior to COVID. These were the first two pages we did. And she was able to tell me a little bit about her mom. And we took the, this teeny tiny little photo that we had, and I was able to scan them in and blow them up. Can you hold that for her? The, the rolls. <laughs> okay. And um, <laughs> here's, oh, here, hold on a minute. There you go. I think I'm giving away who my special guest is. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Are you, are you on? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to scoot you over here. Oh, okay. okay. So we're going to look at it over here. And um, before we go on, so I was telling them, Betty, this is your mom. And we took these tiny little pictures and we blew them up big. Oh. Right. And then you were able to write the story. We did this mm -hmm. a little earlier. And then we've been working on this, this page. Mm -hmm. So before I share a little bit more about what we've doing, let me introduce you. Because I don't think you all have had a chance to meet. This is Betty. <laughs> Can you see yourself up there? Uh -huh. Say yeah. hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is John's mom. And as I mentioned, she's here. And I thought, I go, Betty, would you like to come on live with me today? She goes, yeah, why not? Now that is the spirit, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm just, as, I, as we've said, I'm so blessed to have her here. And they're saying, hi, Betty, and welcome. <laughs> you can't see it, but all these little writing over here there's they're talking to me oh okay. and you now while oh. we're live so they're saying hello hello betty everybody's saying oh. hello hello, <laughs> hello everybody. so my glasses you should oh, yeah, it's tiny. it's kind of tiny it's okay yeah, but it's okay. yeah so we have been having so much fun kind of looking at these photos and talking about all these different things. And I'm going to have to ask for your help on something because I got stuck from what we were talking about yesterday. So okay. I'm going to switch back over to um, the desktop. So now we're going to see here what we're working on and they can watch us here. And everybody says it's so good to see you and hello. They're still saying hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> okay. It's so wonderful to be here. Yeah, oh, it really gosh. is. It really is. So wonderful to have her. Okay, so this was actually, we found one of your earliest photos. And she, Betty was 17 in this photo. 
And so what we decided to do was to use the story cards, right? Remember we were using these. Yeah. These are the dot grid on one side and the story cards on the other because it was helping Betty to have some lines here of who to write, you know, like kind of answer those questions. The who, what, when, where. And then um, some of the details. And the details is where you were telling me stories but I, I, was, I, I was like, well, what am I going to do? Because Betty wasn't able to write down all the things. So what I decided to do was, um, remember this photo? Mm -hmm. So I put this photo in a peekaboo pocket. And then on the flip side, oh. I wrote what we were talking oh, about. Good. That's great. <laughs> so... I'm going to share what I wrote, but you're going to have to help me finish over here because I forgot. I know bits and pieces, but we're going to have to finish the story. Oh, okay. So this is where um, I, I wanted to kind of leave this as Betty, right? Like th this is her handwriting. We took cards and we just cut them up and made little notes about the dates that things were and uh, Betty put over here. She did her own hair. I asked her, I go, look at those braids. Did you do that yourself? She braided her own hair. Now I know where Audrey gets it from. <laughs> yeah, I was just telling her this morning about yeah. the way she made her braid in the yeah. back. Yeah, she can do it. I can't do that. So she got it from you, yeah. Betty. <laughs> just like Ellen got my nails. Yep, my Ellen was. got your nails. That's right. Audrey must have got your hair braiding and all that curly, beautiful hair. So, um, okay, so... Where was I? I was here uh, yeah. talking about the story. So what we were doing yesterday is looking at these photos and we actually had to kind of pick out what we wanted to put in here. So there were some other, even though there's not a lot of photos, there were some choices that Betty wanted to make. And so I wanted to let her kind of drive the process of what she wanted in here. And so one of the things, remember we said, um, what you didn't want. And so I'm keeping the photo folders handy. And this is awesome where it's coming in handy to write notes on here. And so she said, well, this guy right here, I only dated him a few times. Ralph, Tito, Tito. Tito. And Tito. she goes, I really don't want him in the album. And I said, okay, <laughs> we don't have to put him in there. She's like, he's not family. I go, I get it. Okay. So Ralph is now going to just stay in the photo folder, but there's a little note here of, you know, what Betty told me about that. So we're just going to keep him here. And then um, while we were going through things, we also, like this was one of the original photos that we scanned that's now big. So I wanted to have a place to just kind of keep those. So the photo folders are coming in handy uh as always for this project, but also to just write some notes. And John was over here and he was actually on Google looking up, was it North yeah, Arizona or was it South Arizona, yeah. right? <laughs> so, um, and he was able, based on Betty's memory of where she went to school, she goes, it was only a couple blocks away. So he was able to find that it was South Arizona where she lived. So here's what I wrote from what we talked about yesterday. So Betty was telling me different things about this. And I said, well, is this the house you grew? You can see the house number. Is this the house you grew up in? Yes. And so forth. So, so far what I have is this is the house where Betty grew up. She remembers walking to school, which was only a couple of blocks away. Her cousins right here, Joe and David, um, would come to visit as they lived close by. They would put on boxing gloves and have a pretend fight while Betty watched from the couch. Yeah. yeah. She and her sisters were close and Betty was the oldest of the girls and had a wonderful relationship. I just put all your siblings because you really did. Yeah. With her siblings through the years. She was yeah. very close to all of them. Then remember, I looked in this photo and I saw this car. Remember this little mm -hmm. car? And then you told me the story about the car, but I couldn't remember who gave it to you. The, the, the owner that bought my, my, after my grandfather died, my enemy used to be in charge of uh, 
the man that sold that sold me that car. Okay, so it was a, like a friend of the family? No, no, no. It he, was he was just a stranger. Oh, okay, that brought the property. Okay, so so you got you got a car from a local from person the, from the from your from the owner that bought the property from my grandpa. From the owner that bought brought bought the property from your grandpa. But what I remember you telling me is that you were only 16, 17? Yeah, about 17, yeah. 16 or 17, okay. Most of my pictures that I have here are seven, when I was right, 17. Right, right. Just with 17. Okay. So, and then can you tell the story again of when you said, let's go for a ride? When I what? When you wanted to go for a ride. Oh, well, I got... <clears throat> now, that was when my dad used to come to visit, and I'd get in his car, and I'd do the gears. The, they were, he had to put in reverse and first and second, mm -hmm, you know, that time mm -hmm. in the car. So when I learned them, I told my, my, my siblings, do you want to go for a ride? You said, yeah. So we got up and took off. Okay. Just, just <laughs> that was in your dad's car. And, and yeah. how old do you think you were there? Uh, probably the same age. Around the same Around age. The so same you had age. a car, but you would take your dad's car. Yeah. No. Okay. Oh, wait. My, the car that I bought, yeah, what's about? Yeah, but I think I remember now because I was working for my aunt. Okay. Yeah. So you got a car when you were working? You were working? For your aunt, what did she do? My aunt Mickey. What did what did you do for your aunt? What was your job? Oh, at her grocery store. Ah, okay, at her grocery store. Was that close by? No, it was uh, maybe a couple of miles. Okay, so you had to drive your car there. Uh. Who do you was, remember? We used to tell her, no, we used to walk. Uh, or did you walk? I think we Evelyn and I walked. Because it was a couple of blocks, I think. No, maybe no. I think it was lo longer. Okay. I don't remember now. Um, I'm going to take some more notes on here because these are some news stories. So as we're talking, new questions are coming up. And so you... Um, wait, I'm going to not, I don't have to put you, we, so you worked for, do you remember the name mm -hmm. of her grocery store? Uh, Nyla's, Nyla's, is it called Nyla's grocery store. It was my, Nyla's? My, my dad, my dad's, uh, side of the family. It was okay. his sister's grocery store. Dad's side. Okay. Side. Yeah, my dad's uh, sister. Is it N I L A? N I L A, was that her name? Nyla, 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 we call her Nyla's, Nyla's. N I L A, though? Do you remember? Or two L? No. Hmm. No, just any. Dad's side, so it was your dad's sister. Yeah. Sister. Okay, got it. And um, and so that's the dad that you would hop in his car. Well, of course, that's true. <laughs> you would hop in his car. But um, for Nyla's grocery store, how long did you work there? Uh, let's see. I think I was 18. So only about a year? Uh-huh. Okay. Because then when they killed my, aunt, my my cousin, they closed the store and they never opened it again. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was in the Army and he lived uh, a tank blew up and he got killed. Oh, okay. Closed door. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. And never and never reopened. All right. I've got some notes. So what I kind of uh, reopened. Okay. So I remember you mentioning the car and... Now I've got the whole story about your aunt and the grocery store. And, okay. I don't and, even remember what happened to that car. 
you don't remember <laughs> what happened to the car. So one of the things, and, and so this is kind of the process I wanted to share with our friends online that we've been going through is kind of looking back, asking those questions, seeing if we can pull out some more memories that you have of this time. And then, um, you know, taking notes. And then the process is, since it's easier for Betty just to talk about it, then I can take that, take some notes, and then translate that into a story for her. And, it, and you're okay with that, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> she was hoping last night I would do the handwriting. <laughs> so yeah. what I wanted to do was then have a place to put the story, but keep, you know, the photos and everything center stage here. So I put it in the peekaboo pocket. So the good thing about story cards is that, you know, if I make a mistake, like I can see I made a mistake. And I may want to think more about how to tell the story that we just got, because I love hearing about that, that you worked at a grocery store. I don't think we knew that. And then the other story, um, so so then this is just going to go in there, and you guys know what I'm going to do, right? We're going to get a little tag, we're going to punch a tag, and then we're going to put the little under here or the story on the tag so that will know that there's story under here. And, and that seems to be working really well. But what I love about this whole idea too, is I'm going to go back here because we found, I found out something about your mom yesterday that I don't think John even knew. None of us had heard this story before. Do you want to tell the, the two Petras? Oh yeah. My mom had an older sister. And her name was Big Petra, well, in Spanish, Pet Petra Grande. And then she named my mom, who was younger, Petra. She named her also Petra. Two Petras. Two Petras <laughs> in both family. And, and we used to call your mom? My mom, uh, uh, Petra Chica. It's a small yes. or younger Petra. So somebody the, the delivery. Yeah. So that's a really fun story that we never knew. I never knew about your mom. That there were two Petras. Yeah. <laughs> so she was small Petra. Uh, but she was the older. Your my my wait. Yeah, Pita Grande and Pita Chica. Oh, these are I thought they were both your mom. Are they both your mom? No? Oh yeah, but that looked different than my mom. But that, that's I didn't have pictures of my my other Petra. You didn't so have of your aunt. No. Your aunt my was aunt. the older one. Yeah. So this yeah, is Petra and Chica. Those are both my mom. Chica. Yeah. So so what a fun story! And if we hadn't been together, just kind of talking about a bunch of stuff, we never would have yeah. got that story to come out. Now, she did write here, I love this, growing up, we would watch my mom cook, make tortillas and tamales, and we learned how to cook by watching her. We used to go to the beach and stay overnight. We would sleep on the sand in tents and roast marshmallows on a campfire. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that yeah, story? Yeah, I remember yeah. as soon as we got to the beach, I would run and get in the water when I was pregnant from John. Oh. The other mama would tell me, when he's born, I want to tell him, when he's able to understand, I want to tell him to try to drown him. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I didn't. I just love the water. <laughs> you love the water, yeah. And we have a really fun picture of Betty. So, so this is kind of the setup that we're doing. So in order to put the Petra story in here, I could do the same thing, is get a, put a peekaboo pocket and then tell that story underneath there so that we can have that story preserved with her mom's photos along with Betty's beautiful handwriting here. So um, one of the, so that's kind of how we're approaching this project, but uh, let me show you. We also uh, got the box that this is uh, Betty's story. So I labeled the box Betty's story because we want to have kind of a place we can hold everything. The photo folders can 
sit in here and all the photos that we've been working on. So this is our next, we have our next project kind of sorted over here. And then um, I want to show them that picture. If it's here, or it might be over there, I can't remember. I don't remember if we put it in here. Maybe we'll have to grab it. Um, which, which one? Of you with John, pregnant with John. I think that's oh, our yeah, next page. Totally that's the next yeah. page. Okay, but one thing, what I wanted to mention is um, in this process, the other thing that I learned from working with Betty yesterday is we start, you know, we kind of started the album in this memories, memoirs and milestones format, the, the fast to fab pages. And we got here and I was looking at the papers. Let me show them to you. Memoirs and my, and memoirs and memories. <laughs> okay. So if anybody's wondering what the fast to fab pages are, it's from this collection. It was from a while back, but here's what we were realizing when we were looking at the pages, they were kind of dreary and drab, right? And Betty and I just were not excited <laughs> about <laughs> these color pages. And so the other thing, the other tip I have for you in doing a heritage album, especially if you have the opportunity of working with someone who can help, who's helping tell their story, is to find something that reflects who they are, right? So I was pulling out different things and we were kind of going, nah, nah. And then I pulled this out and Betty goes, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we ended up pulling in with memoirs uh, the Burlap and Lace collection because there's a lot of fun things. And then she said, oh, I love butterflies. Right. And so we've got the butterflies going on down here. Betty helped me punch some butterflies for the embellishments. And so I was able to get her to kind of look at what colors we wanted to add in here. So this was from a secret box a while back, the burlap and lace bundle. But it goes really nicely, I think, with the heritage photos. So we did some of the wood. And then this lace with, um, her favorite color is red. But we thought red might be a little too, um, we needed the right red. So this is kind of a mauvey pink that we decided to use for her book. But as soon as we pulled this in, the reason I'm saying that is as soon as we pulled this in, it felt so much more like you. Then, let me show, uh, like these pages. Here's the next two pages. And we both kind of were like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get to some pages, you know, and not everybody's using fast to fab, of course, but you know, make it, make it yours. So we're just going to kind of work around this rusty part and pull in some lace and this is the cutest picture of Betty. So we're going to get the story of this. This was once she was married and started and had kids. This was, um, let's see, that was Bernadette. And, oh, that's John. Yeah, John. Oh, look, yeah. there's my hubby right there when he was a baby. <laughs> okay, so there was John and his sister, Berna. And, uh, and some really cute. So we're going to get some stories about these photos. We have a few others but that would be my other tip is, you know, if you're working on some pages or working with older photos, it doesn't have to be drab. Like you don't have to put these on, you know, drab. Um, at first I was thinking, oh, it's heritage. It has to look a certain way. But really, I think it should reflect the person and their life and kind of what they want. So we're going to be digging into some more stash and pulling in some pretty colors to kind of finish these books. So um, it it's more reflective of Betty's story and what we want to say. So like I would say my mom, the albums I chose for my mom, purple. She's a, She was a purple. She loved like blue and purple. My mom loved blue and purple. So that would kind of be her color. And Betty loves red and white and, 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 white and those kind of, you know, uh, warmer color tone. So, you know, I think that's what we're going to reflect in her album. 
So we had the, and do you want to tell them the funny story? I had the, you guys would, would have laughed last night because I had the butterfly and we, I found one butterfly. Yeah. In my sleeve, but we <laughs> lost the other one. It's still gone. <laughs> Still gone. So we're still missing a red butterfly that was somewhere. <laughs> I couldn't find it this morning. I know. I, I'm I'm I, I couldn't butterfly. find it. Yep. So um, I hope that kind of just kind of sharing a little bit about our process um, was helpful for you guys. So let me come back. I'm going to bring Betty back on screen too. So we can say uh, hello. And I... Um, Oh, yes. And Barb, thank you for mentioning that. Is she, Barb was asking, do you ever tape your conversations to transcribe later? And her grandmother was a Petra, too. <laughs> okay, so we were actually doing that yesterday. I was recording, and then my husband John's like, wait a minute, we should just get the video out. So I, I got my phone and one of my little stands. And so while Betty was pointing to things and telling the story, we actually just recorded that as well. So we'll have that to go back to, right? I mean, I could have gone back, but then I just wanted you to tell the story about the car again, which was good because we got another, I got another story. So, um, and Diane said she's using Jazzberry. Oh, I'll have to, Betty would love Jazzberry. You would love that collection, Betty. I'll have to get Jazzberry out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I know I'm I'm so happy Betty is here to do this with me. And um Ali says she was using the Otter app to record her dad's voice, letting telling his stories, and then it transcribes it also. Ooh, that's awesome. Otter, O-T-T-E-R. So I'll have his voice on record as well. Often in the car on our way to doctor's appointments. Yeah. And it's so funny, you know, I remember years and years ago, I did this with my grandma and, um, you know, this, my, my grandma grew up in the age of horse and buggy. This was my mom's mom. And we got out, uh, <laughs> can, who here remembers the Sears catalog? Do you remember the Sears mm -hmm. catalog? Yeah. Yeah. So we got out a Sears catalog and opened that up and, kind of just because my grandmother wasn't much of a storyteller. And so we just had to kind of get conversations going. So we got that um, catalog out and then she started just remembering things of, you know, how she grew up with certain things in that catalog. And she was telling me, <clears throat> some of you Southerners know Cracker Barrel. Well, we have a crack Cracker Barrel close to Betty now too. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother remembers uh, actually going to the store where they had a cracker barrel, <laughs> right? Where you actually got your crackers in a barrel. And, and that's where the name came from. That's how they stored crackers. And you'd lift off the lid and grab those crackers. Really? Yep. Oh. That, yep. So she remembered that growing up as a child. Um, so it's wonderful to get those stories uh, as we're working together and listening and, and doing that. So um, tape them, record them. Um, <clears throat> and Diane is sorting mom's heritage photos today. So perfect timing. And, uh, Sandra says storytelling is still important to her as well. Family stories are the best. I agree. So, um, yeah. And I hope, uh, this was just maybe a few little things for you to think about today. If you are going to work on a heritage project, and I just couldn't, couldn't pass up an opportunity for you to meet Betty. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you'll see what we'll be doing here today. And as a special treat for you all, I also wanted to mention, I did, um, because I feel so strongly about storytelling, I am actually putting my Doc Grid story cards on special this week. So they are, if you buy two, basically you buy one and you get one for half price. So you can get two, they're gonna, it's a new item, you get two packs and the two pack price is getting, buy one and getting one half price. 
And that's only going to be <laughs> while supplies last. But I feel so strongly that, you know, either record or write down anytime you can the little bits and pieces. And then like I've been mentioning, you can just take these stories and tuck them into the photo folders and, you know, you have things contained for when you're ready to put those into your albums. And um, the photo folders, I had a Mad Dash run on them. They are sold out right now, but the printer, they're at the printers getting printed again, and I'm hoping to have them back in stock at the beginning of next week, ready for shipping. So just wanted to um, mention that. But if you really like the idea of the story cards, you can grab those uh, all this week, stock up, grab them at a, at a really good price. So you can just write all those stories. Yeah, down. I really like them. You do? Okay. Yeah. My, my spokesperson right here. <laughs> it was easy to write. Yeah. And you could see from when we um, put them on her page, you could just use little pieces of it mm -hmm. too, right? And then she goes, oh, I made a mistake. I go, no problem. Flip it over <laughs> or cut it off and yeah. <laughs> we I can start her, over. I made a mistake. <laughs> it's no okay. Problem. Chop. <laughs> all right. So um, thank you all for hopping on here today and joining in some fun. And I appreciate all of you coming on. Don't forget, Friday is the pop crop. And uh, hopefully there will be some good learning lessons in there. There'll be a new uh, sketch for you to uh, download right before the crop. And so all that will be coming out later this week, getting ready for the, the pop crop. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. And uh, we really appreciated you all coming on to say hello and uh, having some fun with us today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And until I see you next time, I hope you take time to craft some joy. Yeah. And yeah. For me, you all have a blessed week. Thank you. Go ahead and, and wave bye, Betty. Bye. Bye. We'll see you soon. <laughs> mm -hmm.